This is the first video in a series about the Quine McCluskey logic minimization algorithm. This is a very powerful and elegant algorithm which results in an optimally minimal Boolean function. In this video, I will show how to perform the first step in the algorithm, which is finding the prime implicants of a Boolean function. At the same time, I will show the parallels between this algorithm and the simplification of a K-map. Suppose that we have a function f, which is going to be denoted by a sum of min terms and don't care. So the min terms will be 2, 5, 6, 11, 12, 14, and 15. And the don't cares will be 0, 3, and 4. The first step, as I mentioned, is going to be to find the prime implicants. So we're going to first list all of our min terms and don't cares in a table. So we'll have column 1, which will be all of our min terms and don't cares together. So the first one is 0, 0, 0, 0, corresponding to the number 0, the don't care over here. Then we'll have 0, 0, 1, 0. And so you'll notice as I go along that it, this is not in binary order, but in a slightly different order, which I will mention as soon as I'm done making this table. So here is all of our min terms and don't cares. And the order that they're in is actually grouped by the number of ones that they have in the expression. So that's how we're going to separate them. We'll put a dash line in between these two values because this first one has zero ones and these have one one. Then we go through all the ones with one one and that stops over here. And so we'll put a dash line between. Then we'll look at all the ones with two ones and that stops here. And then three ones and the last one has four ones. So we can write that down. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 ones. The reason that we do this is because now we are going to try to combine these terms by looking at locations where they differ by only one bit. And we know that that can only happen between values which uh, differ in only one one value. So we're going to look uh, between the 0 and 1 locations and then we'll look between the 1 and 2 and then the 2 and the 3 and the 3 and the 4. It wouldn't make any sense to compare 0 and 2 because we know that those cannot possibly differ by only one bit location. So let's have a look at this. We can look and we can combine some values, we can see that 0, 0, 0, 0 differs by just one location from 0, 0, 1, 0, specifically in the third bit over here. And we can combine them, as I said, into 0, 0, dash, 0. So this dash represents the one location that is different. And so everything else about them is the same. And likewise, we can look at this first value and the third one and we can see that they can be combined into 0 dash 0 0. Now at the same time as I'm doing this I'd like to also show what's happening on a K-map. So let's put all of these terms that we have onto our K-map. And now let's look at what's happening. So this first column over here contains all of the terms individually. That's the same thing as looking at just one square on the k-map at a time. 
So 0, 0, 0, 0, that was our first don't care term. That's this one. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, that's this term here. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, over here, and so on. And we can see that if we were just to highlight each location that corresponds to each of the entries in the first column, that's just going to highlight all of the squares that have something in it, either a one or a don't care. Now, the second column which we are forming over here, this is column two, is a combination of some of these values in the first column. And that's the same thing as expanding our blocks in the K-map by looking at the adjacent neighbor. So trying to expand each block which is able to be expanded in the K-map. So in other words, if we look at 0, 0, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 1, 0, we saw that that forms 0, 0, dash 0. Well, if we look at them here, 0, 0, 0, 0, that's this term. 0, 0, 1, 0, that's this one. And what we did is we basically expanded that square to encompass both of these, which gives us this encirclement on the K-map. And that corresponds to 0, 0, dash, 0. So we basically took these two blocks and expanded them. This next one over here, well, that's 0, 0, 0, 0, that's this one again. And now we're expanding it to 0, 1, 0, 0. So that's with this one. And so we bring them together, and that gives us another encirclement on here, which corresponds to 0, dash, 0, 0. And so then what we do is we go through this next group. So we're done with um, 0 and 1, comparing the 0 and 1. And for each one that we were able to pair off, we're going to check off here. So I'll, I'll highlight them, the ones that formed another pair. Now we're going to compare the 1 and the 2 group. And so again, we can go through these one by one and we look at 0, 0, 1, 0, and then we look at 0, 0, 1, 1. And yes, those two actually also differ by just one value. So they're 0, 0, 1, dash. And then we can look at, so then we can check this one off because we've used it. We can use it again later on, but we just want to keep track of the ones that we have used for anything. And so if we look at the K-map, what we just did, we we saw we, we took zero zero one zero, so that is zero zero one zero. That's this value again, and we combined it with zero zero one one. That's this one. Well, that makes sense again on a K map because we can expand to the neighboring square and get something that combines. So this one right here is zero zero one dash. And we keep going. So we look at 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. And these two we can see differ by more than one bit. So we look at the next one 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Those two differ by just one. So we've got 0, dash, 1, 0. And again, there is a corresponding block for that on the K-map. So 0, 0, 1, 0, again we're over here, and we can see that that clearly expands down to 0, 1, 1, 0, down here. And so again, all we're doing is expanding our terms by 1 in the K-map, if that's possible to do. So this one right here corresponds to 0, dash, 1, 0. And so then we can keep on going and what we'll get is the following. So what we get in the second column is all of the possible combinations of terms that could have been expanded by one block on the K-map. And so we 
get all possible encirclements of two terms on our K map. That's what this step essentially does with these combinations. And from here, we can move on to column 3. And column 3 is just going to be combinations in the same way of the elements of column 2. So again, we can group column 2 by the number of 1s. And so we separate here. And we separate over here. And over here. And once again, we'll compare adjacent groups here. And what that's going to do is that's going to, again, try to expand our terms on the K-map. So let's see what happens. For example, and in this case, we have to have dashes line up as well. So dashes have to be also the same in two adjacent terms. So we look at 0, 0, dash, 0, 0, 0, 1, dash. Two values differ here. 0, 0, dash, 0. 0 dash 1 0 again no good 0 0 dash 0 0 1 0 dash no 0 0 dash 0 0 1 dash 0 yes that works we have dash in the third location zeros in the first and fourth and we have a differing term in the second so these two terms will combine to 0 dash dash 0 and again, we can keep going, and we find another correspondence from this group from over here. And this gives us 0 dash dash 0, which is actually the same as this one. What that means is that on the K-map, we were able to expand to the same implicant by using two different starting points. Specifically for this one, we can see that to, to make this first combination, we took 0, 0, dash, 0. 0, 0, dash, 0 is this term over here, which is this encirclement. And we expanded it down with 0, 1, dash, 0, which is the corresponding term right here. So if I shade these in, the first one was this one, and the second one was this one. And so we expand them down, and we get this one bigger term, which is going to be this entire encirclement. And that's what we got over here. But we could have likewise done that by looking at the term over here first and over here and expanding it sideways. And that will give us the same exact thing, and that's what the second term over here implies. So we keep on going with our comparisons, and of course we have to check the ones that we use so far. And we keep going with our comparisons, and we get the following. And again, we see that we have these two terms, which are the same. And that, once again, comes about from the fact that we could have expanded in two different ways, specifically this block and this block. or we could have gone sideways. And so again, what we get is this expansion, which is going to be this bigger encirclement. And as we can see on the K-map, just visually, there are no other places that could be expanded any further in order to encircle four boxes at once. And that makes sense, because these are the only ones that are able to combine in this way. And so what we get is we found all the prime implicants. The prime implicants are denoted by all the terms here which have not been checked. And so again, we, we could look at column 3 and try to compare terms, but we see that the, um, none of these differ by just one bit, so we're done. As soon as we see that there are no more matches, we're done. So our prime implicants are going to be denoted by everything that's left, which I'm circling over here. It's these terms. And are new terms in column 3. We just take them once for the ones that repeat because we don't need to list them multiple times. And so based on that, we can write down our prime implicants, which are going to be, if I denote my variables here as A, B, C, D, 
we can see that this one is 001 dash and that corresponds to a bar b bar c and 010 dash that's a bar b c bar and so on. And from column 3 we have A bar D bar and B D bar. And that's it. And that's how you find the prime implicants in this organized tabular way. We combine all the values which differ by just one bit which is exactly what we would do visually on a K map. We look and we try to find the maximal pairings on a K-map which differ by just one bit at a time. And basically, in this case, we start off by just looking at each individual term and we expand them as much as we can in all directions until we no longer can expand them anymore. And that's what this does in the same exact way. Now, K-map works well up to four variables, but this method can work on a lot more variables and will still keep things nice and organized. So in this video we have seen how to find all of the prime implicants of a boolean function. In the next video we will explore how to find the minimal subset of prime implicants which realizes the given function.